So this is question one from the 2015 sample questions on inferential statistics. A survey of 50 Leaving Cert candidates in 2014, randomly selected in the Dublin region, found that they had a mean mark of 374 in a certain subject. The standard deviation of this sample was 45. So part A says find the 95% confidence interval for the mean mark in the subject in the Dublin region and then we have to interpret this interval. Okay, so the 95% confidence interval for the mean, if we are trying to find that, there is a formula we use for that. And the formula looks like this. It's x bar, which is the sample mean, plus or minus, 1.96 times sigma over root n. So this x bar here, this is the sample mean. The sigma up here is the standard deviation for the population. And the n is the sample size. And this 1.96 then is linked to the 95% figure here. So this is the formula you need to know. You can memorize this formula. So we're just going to find the interval using this formula. So x bar is the sample mean, and that's given to us as 374. This is for the sample of 50. So it's going to be 374 plus or minus. 1.96 is always in this formula. Again, that's linked to the 95% figure. Now, we don't have the standard deviation for the population here, but we do have the standard deviation of the sample. So we're allowed to use that as an approximation if we don't have the standard deviation for the population. So we can use that 45 here on top. And that's all over the square root of n, where n is the sample size. So that's the 50 up here. n is the 50. Okay. So now we're just going to work this out in our calculator once with plus and once with minus. So the first one would be 374 minus 1.96 times 45 over root 50. And that is equal to... 361, we're just going to round this to a few decimal places, maybe three, it hasn't stated, so we'll just round it to three decimal places. 361.527. And then when we do the same formula then over here, this time with plus, again you can do all this on your calculator. This time we get 386.473 to three decimal places. So we know that our we know that our um, the population mean. Which we can call mu. So our population mean mu. We know that that lies between three six point five two seven and the upper limit of three eight six point four seven three. We know that this this value. For the population mean lies in lies in this region ninety five percent of the time. Okay, so for part the second part of this question where it says interpret the value, uh, we can do that over here. So so we can say. We have 
95% confidence. That the mean mark in the subject in Dublin or in the Dublin region lies in the interval. So that lies in the interval that we set down there. So that's our interval. And we have 95% confidence that the mean mark in the subject in Dublin lies in that interval from, from looking at the sample. And what that 95% confidence means that So it means if we repeat the procedure so if we repeat the procedure uh, with different samples We've just looked at one sample, but if we were to do this with lots of samples, lots of different samples, the population mean would lie inside the interval ninety five per cent of the time. Ninety five per cent of the time. Okay, and that's the end of part A. So part B says the mean mark in the subject for all leaving cert candidates in 2014 was 385 and the standard deviation was 45. So now we know the population mean and the population standard deviation. John suggests that the mean mark in the Dublin region is not the same as the whole country. Test this hypothesis using a 5% level of significance and clearly state your null hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis, and your conclusion. Okay. Well, the 5% level of significance, this 5% level of significance, that is linked to the 1.96 figure, which we used in the previous part. That, again, that's linked to this 1.96 figure. So we've already used that. So Really all we have to do here is look at this population mean and see does it lie within the interval. Now before we do that, I guess we can state our null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis, which we always show as H0, uh, the null hypothesis will always be that there is no change. So in our case, the, the null hypothesis would be that the mean mark in Dublin is the same as the mark in the whole country. So the mean the mean in Dublin is the same as the mean in the country. Okay, and the alternative hypothesis then, which we show as H1, will be that the mean is different. So the mean in Dublin 
is different from the country. This is what John's suggesting. That it's going to be different. So that's our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So because if we look back at our interval, it goes from 361.527 to 386.473. So we know that our 385 is between that. So it's greater than 361.527. And it's less than the 386.473. So because it's in between there, what we can say is that it lies inside the confidence interval and we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we must state that we do not reject No hypothesis. At the five percent level of, of significance. So that's our conclusion there. So we have our null hypothesis, our alternative hypothesis, and our conclusion because the three eight five lies in the interval that we calculated in part A. And that's the end of question one.